My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the portion of scripture for our consideration this afternoon comes from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, beginning at verse 9. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and teacher of the law, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people have been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be still, for this is a holy day. Do not grieve. Then all the people went away to eat and drink, to send portions of food, and to celebrate with great joy, because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. On the second day of the month, the heads of all the families, along with the priests and Levites, gathered around Ezra the teacher to give attention to the words of the law. They found written in the law, which the Lord had commanded through Moses, that the Israelites were to live in temporary shelters during the festival of the seventh month, and that they should proclaim this word and spread it throughout their towns in Jerusalem, and in Jerusalem. Go out into the hill country and bring back branches from olive and wild olive trees and from myrtles, palms, and shade trees to make temporary shelters, as it is written. So the people went out and brought back branches and built themselves temporary shelters on their own roofs in their courtyards, in the courts of the house of God and in the square by the water gate and, by the, and the one by the gate of Ephraim. The whole company that had returned from exile built temporary shelters in the days of Joshua son of Nun until that day. The Israelites had not celebrated it like this. And their joy was very great. Day after day, from the first day to the last, Ezra read from the book of the law of God. They celebrated the festival for seven days. And on the eighth day, in accordance with the regulation, there was an assembly. My brothers and sisters, it was a time for celebration in Israel. And... For the Israelites who were there, it had been a long time coming. They had been in exile for 70 years. And now finally, the king who ruled over them gave them permission to come back to their homeland. In fact, the king gave them permission to rebuild, to put up walls around Jerusalem, to build a temple again to the Lord. That's good news in and of itself, although when the people got back, it wasn't smooth sailing. Their neighbors and the countries around them did not want them rebuilding Jerusalem. They did not want Israel to be a city-state that is strong again. And so for weeks, maybe months, as they had rebuilt that wall, they built it with one hand holding a sword, as they had to be prepared to fight off their enemies every day. And yet after that trial, after that trouble, the Lord had seen them through. The walls are rebuilt. They rest in security again. And it happens just in time for the festival of the seventh month. The festival that's known as the festival of tabernacles or booths. This was supposed to be one of the most joyous celebrations for Israel. Because they were supposed to build these little makeshift shelters as a remembrance of how their forefathers wandered in the desert and the Lord provided for them day in and day out, manna in the morning, quail in the evening. They were to spend a whole week at giving thanks and praise to God for all of the wonderful mercies he had shown them. Trouble is, as they start this wondrous celebration of joy, the people are crying, just weeping and mourning. 
because something else happened that hadn't happened in a while. As a part of that celebration, the book of the law was to be read. The whole nation was to hear God's words of his covenant with, with Israel again. And so as the people are listening to these words, they cry. Not because the Lord hadn't been faithful or because they were still worried about their security. No, they cry because the Lord had done so much for them. And with every command that's read, they recognize they had not kept it. The further Nehemiah, Ezra, and the Levites get into the law, the more the people recognize we have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. The Lord has been faithful to us on every conceivable level, and we have failed him. Failed him day in and day out, over and over again. The people, on hearing God's law, they are confronted with their sin, and they weep. They cry that they have failed so miserably to uphold their side of the covenant. And that's good. When faced with God's law, it is right and proper that we should recognize our failure to keep it. But that was only to be the first step of Israel's relationship with God. It wasn't supposed to end with, look at how bad you are. It was supposed to continue on to, you are my people. I have called you out of the nations. I have made you my own. And that problem of breaking my commands, of sinning, I will fix that too. I, the Lord, will send your salvation from amongst your own brothers. From your very nation, the Savior of the world would come. The people needed to be reminded of that part too. They needed to see that the way the Lord wanted to treat them was not as wretched sinners who are going to hell, but as his dearly loved people the children who were close to his own heart, the nation he rescued and protected and saved on countless occasions. And so on this day, there was to be no mourning, no weeping. There was to be celebration and joy because of the Lord, their God, because of the salvation he would bring because of the great and mighty wonders he had done for them in the past and done for them in their present and would do for them in their future. And when the people get that, when they see clearly the message the Lord has for them, their rejoicing is unlike any rejoicing that had happened in the nation before. From the time of Joshua, that's when they took over the Promised Land, until that very day, they had never celebrated this festival quite so joyously. The people, everyone gets involved. They all go out and they go assemble their branches to make their booths to live in, and they, these things just cover the city. From the rooftops to the streets to the courts of the temple itself, just everyone is out there living in their little booth, remembering what God has done, praising his name. They are feasting and celebrating and rejoicing that the Lord is their God and they are his people. It's beautiful. To see the relationship that God wants to have with his people, it's amazing. And it is still the relationship the Lord wants to have with his people. This sort of rejoicing and giving thanks was not intended just for Israel. It is for us as well. We too, when we hear God's law, we feel its cutting power. 
It wounds us as it shows us the depths of our sin. As we hear John the Baptist during Advent calling out, Repent, we recognize those words are for us. But that's just the start of the relationship the Lord wants to have with us. That we recognize our sin is just the beginning. He desires we turn from it and then live in joy with him. This is why he sends his son. This is why Jesus is born a baby in a manger in Bethlehem. It is because our Lord desires to live a life that rejoices with us. He desires that we spend eternity with him. Not groveling in the dirt, crying over our failures, but rejoicing and celebrating and singing his praises because he has rescued us, because he has redeemed us, because he has taken our sin and our guilt away, all as a free gift of his grace, all as an outpouring of his love and mercy. The wonders of his love are shown they are wonders that work salvation for us. And so, my brothers and sisters, the time for celebration has come. The time for rejoicing is here. Our God has won for us salvation. In Christ, he has taken our sin away. He has made us citizens of heaven, the heirs of eternal life. And so let us go rejoicing, celebrating, giving thanks to God for all he has done. Because our lives are holy to the Lord. He has bought us with his own blood. We are his. And so we can go rejoicing in the salvation of God our Savior, singing the praises of the Lord who rescued and saved, celebrating the wondrous love given to us in Jesus. Amen.